I am about to make some SVG files for the hearts that are going to go in the triangles on the February Cuties topper. And I'm going to open up in Brilliance. I've got the design in here. And if you want to use the SVG files that came with the Kimberbell Cutie CD, I recommend that you do a test first with your scraps and make sure it's going to fit. I have found that usually Kimberbell files require a plus two on the cutting machine, on the scan and cut, in order for the applique to fit properly. Otherwise, they run just a little bit small because they are sized exactly to the size of the placement line. I'm going to go ahead and turn this uh, horizontally. It's just better for my brain. I'm highlighting it over here in the objects panel and we have a really easy little arrow right here for a right hand turn and we're just going to do that and that makes it easy for me to see. It is the placement line that we want to use in the applique in order to create SVG cut files and I'm going to click on the plus right over here in the object panel and I'm just going to go through here and find the placement lines for the hearts and you can see on this particular design all of the elements that make up this one single design and there are 24 elements but there are only five of them that are placement lines so we only need to make five svg files we have got placement lines for batting let's see i'll have to follow the directions and see exactly what these are okay so right here number three that is the placement line for the pink heart i'm going to come down in the properties box, there is a color chip right here. It doesn't matter what color it is because I'm going to switch it out on my embroidery machine for the ones that I need. I'm going to just click on the chip and I've got two tabs on this thread palette right here. I have color and applique. I'm going to switch to applique. I'm going to change it from not applique. I'm going to hit the drop down and I'm going to call it applique position, what I call placement line. And I've got an inflate of it on uh, 1.0 millimeters. I believe the default is 1.5. You can change it to whatever you want. I'm just going to save it in my Cuties Volume 2 folder on my computer. I created another folder called Embrilliance SVG Files. I'm going to click on that. And then up here in the top, there's a little tiny folder with a little new marking on it. It says create new folder. I'm going to click that. I'm going to call this February. And I'm in February. And I am going to call this heart pink and click save and OK. And OK one more time. And now I'm going to go through here. And that is the tack down line. Okay. I really don't need that because I'm going to iron it down, but I'm going to skip over it on the machine. The first one I'm going to do the old fashioned way to show you guys how it's done. But the rest of them, I am going to do it using the method that I use. And so there is the final stitch on the pink heart. Here is the blue heart. So I'm going to click on the color chip. That's the placement line for the blue heart. Click applique, applique position, and in the cutting section, I'm going to click save, and I'm going to call it heart blue, and save, and OK, and OK. All right, so there are all of my SVG files now. They've been created for the heart, and I can just iron those on instead of having to crimp around the tack down line after it's finished. Now what I want to do is open up the Brother Canvas. I'm here at canvasworkspace.brother.com. You don't have to have a Brother embroidery machine in order to use this. So I'm going to click Login, and I'm going to click New. Here's my new mat. So I need to get these hearts cut out. 
I'm going to click the SVG button right up here in the top menu. So it's import SVG. I'm going to click that and choose file. And in the Kimberbell Cuties Volume 2 folder, here I made my Embrilliance SVG files. And I'm going to go to February. And there they all are. They can only come on one at a time. So even though this looks like a Microsoft Edge HTML document, which is a web file. It is not. It is an SVG file. The Windows machine just does not know what to do with an SVG file because it is not native to Windows. And on the status, it is trying to back up to the cloud. You guys ignore that. You're going to see little red X's uh, all over on here. And until I get that all ironed out, you're going to continue to see that. Just ignore those. So I'm going to click the blue one. I'm going to click Open. There, now you can see it is heart blue SVG. If it was not an SVG file, it would throw an error message on the screen. I'm going to click OK. And it comes in right up here. I'm going to drag it down here into this corner. And it needs four of them. So I'm going to right click and duplicate. Right click, duplicate. Don't change the size. And right click, duplicate. Now that gives me enough hearts for all of my triangles, all four of my triangles. I do not want to cut around these little bitty shapes with scissors in the hoop. That is such a pain. So much easier to go ahead and just iron them on. All right, next I'm going to click SVG again and choose File. And we'll get the orange one and open. Okay, now I am going to send this down to my brother Scan and Cut and cut out my fabrics. And then I will come back and to this particular mat and I will just highlight the entire mat, hit delete on my keyboard, and then go through the process again for the last heart. We are going to hit download and Scan and Cut transfer. And it says it's ready, and I'm going to tell it close. Now I need to remember blue, and then I've got to get them in the right order. I need to make myself a note for this and make sure I get it right. Let's see. SVG files, February, blue, orange, pink, purple. I need to make myself a note and make sure I put the right color on the mat in the right order. Rather than get all crazy trying to exactly match, uh, this is heat and bond light on the back of my colored fabrics for my hearts. My method is usually to, you know, take whatever fusible I'm going to be using on my fabrics and fuse it just to within a few threads. So I put the fabric down, face down. I'll adhere whatever it is to the back. This is my fusible backing. And so I just, and then I trim it and give it a really, really good press. You need your heat and bond light, your substrate to look very shiny when you pull it off. And you don't even have to cut it apart now. So when I do this, this is just me. So I cut these at five and three quarter inches square so they'll fit on the quadrants of the mat. And then all I have to do is just peel them off the backing one at a time, just like this. So there's minimal cutting that I have to do. Now see how shiny that looks? That's a really good adhesion of that substrate on the back. And I recommend Heat and Bond Light because it likes to stick to the Scan and Cut, scan and cut mats better than uh, a lighter substrate. This or Hot Fix Adhesive will work very well when you are trying to use it on a scan and cut mat. So see, it all comes off like this. This also prevents your fabric from fraying. And then they just pull apart. That's how easy it is. This is very simple. You don't have to get all crazy by, you know, cutting this at five and three quarters and then cutting your um, heat and bond at five and three quarters and hope you get it right. I just don't even bother with that. Now, if these will not stick to the mat very well, I will not hesitate to use scotch tape. 
So here's my mat. This is the low tack adhesive mat. It's the one that's turquoise. If you don't have a low tack mat, you can use your standard tack mat, but you're going to want to leave your paper on and put your fabric fabric side down. So this is the low tack mat. I've just got um, this is an equate like a cottonelle wipe, and I'm just going to run over it pretty good. It doesn't, it's not very dirty, so I don't need to put any kind of, um, I usually use LA's Totally Awesome to clean my mat. But this is not real dirty. Looks pretty good. I'm just going over it to give it a, a, a reminder to be sticky. Okay, see, and it pulled off little fuzzies like that, that I didn't even see. And that's great. That's tacky, it's not perfect, it's not good, but it's it'll work. Okay, so I made my little note. We have the purple, right, let's see. Here's the arrow, this is the top. I need to turn it around to me so I can make sure I get it right. This is purple, I'm gonna put this right here. And the pink. I didn't get a blue, I got a green, which is fine. Okay. I'm gonna tape it to the outside, just a little bit on the fabric. Just gonna remind it, don't move. <laughs> All four edges have tape on all four fabrics to encourage them to stay in place. Okay, and everything's gonna uh, cut out just perfect. Okay, I have got my machine turned on and I'm just gonna put the mat right in here. Let me go to home, tell it okay. All right, so I'm gonna hit the load button, which is the third one right here. And just get this mat loaded. All right, here's the main menu for the scan and cut. We have pattern and scan, and these are patterns that are in the machine when you bought it. Got another button down here, retrieve data, and that's what I want so that I can get the data from the cloud that I sent down. So I'm gonna to touch retrieve data, and you can get it from the machine. Like if I save whatever I downloaded from the cloud and I saved it into the machine, that's where I would get it. I've got the cloud, I've got a USB, or I might be cabled to my computer. This is the SDX325. So I am going to touch the cloud, get my hearts, there they are. And what I wanna do now is I wanna scan the mat and make sure everything's gonna fit exactly where I want it. And that's another beauty of the scan and cut. So this button right here, the blue box with a bar across it, that's your mat scanning button. So I'm gonna to touch it and I'm gonna tell it start. And it's scanning the mat to take a picture of everything that is on the mat. All right, it looks like everything is gonna cut out just absolutely fine, which I anticipated, because I pretty much got the whole mat covered except for a little bit. If something didn't fit, I could certainly tap the design and move it just a tiny bit and make it so that it would fit. That's the beauty of that. See, like this is a little close over here. I could certainly um, move these just a tiny bit and get that over a little closer. There. And as I was saying earlier, if you are using the SVG files from Kimberbell, you would want to go into like select an object. Okay, you'd want to go into edit, object edit. And then right here we have a stretchy arrow to enlarge it or make it smaller. We have a multiples button with a plus sign or you can rotate. You would touch this right here and then make sure that the button for horizontal and vertical is turned on so that everything changes at the same time. And then I would hit either one of these plus signs one or two times. And that's gonna enlarge just that object one or two times. Let me bring this back down, tell it okay. 
Now here's back where we were. I'm just going, this was the scan button. We know everything fits. I'm going to go OK. It says please select and I'm going to tell it cut. And start. <laughs> All right, I'm going to take my little spatula here and lift these. I'm going to grab the tape. I don't want to leave the tape on the mat, so I'm just going to grab it as I go to pull off. Generally, when you are making SVG files, I have found from In Brilliance, you will get like one little thread that will hang on on the cut file. Sometimes it comes off cleanly and sometimes it doesn't. So, all right. Yeah, so all of these have this one, like that one came off clean, but still, all day long, guys, I will take my little scissors and just trim that one little thread and get these out rather than have to cut in the hoop. That is one of my least favorite parts of doing applique. I love doing applique, but I don't like doing that. So look at that. That's just wonderful that that came out like that. I don't have this problem with the little thread catching when I am cutting from an image. If I have an image that I'm, you know, like a like when I do uh, tracing around a Lori Holt simple shape with a line. I'm going to uh, get this out of here. But if I am making a cut from a SVG file that uh, in Brilliance did not create, then I don't get this. So it's no big deal. It's still infinitely better than trimming in the hoop. There we go. Also, you'll notice I used less fabric because you don't have to have that extra to grab a hold of to cut away. So I only used a five and three quarter inch square of the fabric and I had lots left over to add into my little fabric stash. It's always where it stops and starts the design where it cuts. That's always where it leaves that one little thread. Okay, all finished. Now I do not have to cut in the hoop and I love it. This is awesome. Okay, I'm gonna put the yellow fabric on here and get that set up in the canvas and then run it down and go ahead and cut out the yellow hearts. Okay. 